I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the last six months, I have been putting all these videos on Patreon to explain how to do things. And I've only done follow-ups of a few things. So today, I'm going to do a follow-up of everything that I've showed you in Patreon on how-tos for the last six months. If you watch this and I missed something, ask me in the chat and I'll make another video including that. Because I don't know what I re remembered or didn't. But I made a list. I just went through my Patreon videos. I made a list. I'm going to go around. I'm going to do an update of how they are today on March 9th, 2021. And I'll check these off as we go so that we can do this. It's going to be super fun. At least I'm going to have fun. All right. So in a whole bunch of the videos, I showed unpacking my seeds. I got seeds from a whole bunch of different places. Nichols Garden Nursery, all these places, right? Well, here's my seeds right here. So this is the update. I've planted a lot of seeds. These are the seeds ready to go. Everything in that greenhouse came from right here as a seed. I brought in no transplants. I have a policy. I don't bring in transplants because it can bring in a disease. It can bring in aphids, it can bring in white flies, it can bring in a million other bugs, and it can bring in disease. And so I don't want that. I want to start everything from seed. Okay, on December 30th, I posted a video about starting seed potatoes. And so here they are. They grew so good and they were so beautiful, I wanted to use them as a window screen. So it's the screen from my bedroom. I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're in my bedroom here. And uh, instead of a curtain on my bedroom window, I have potatoes. So that's super awesome. <laughs> on January 13th, I made a video showing starting ginger. These are the first ones we transplanted in that video. And so they, this is my window screen. As soon as warm weather comes, these are going out into the greenhouse to grow ginger. These right, these potatoes, well, they're already starting to die. That's a potato that's growing. So these guys are producing potatoes. And we have had flowers on here. See, it already flowered. We were enjoying flowers last week. So the potatoes are awesome. I'll be sorry when I don't have my green curtain. Okay, so on March 2nd, I, the video went out on pre-sprouting potatoes. So that was just days ago. So here we go. In the video, I told you that it needed to have lots of humidity. Can you see that close up right there of that humidity? Oh yeah. So this is the humidity that's on the inside of the of the plastic that I was talking about. Um, in that end of that video, the potatoes were up a little bit too high, so I had I put some more handfuls on here. So this was March um, first. The video came out on March second, and today is the ninth. So it's been. It's been nine days. You have a lot of growth. Going Eight to on. nine days. We have all these beautiful guys. So this is when I would plant them outside. I would gently lift these ones with the roots like this, and the leaves are opening. I would lift these. This one right here. Lift that out, and then go plant it outside. And we could cut this in half. Now is when I would cut them. I would cut that piece out. Leave this one out here to sprout again. February 9th was the jade plant. When I I took this jade plant, we did the video about the trimming it as a bonsai. I wired it down like you do with a bonsai. It's in a big pot. Bonsai's normally in a shallow pot, but hey, it's a work in progress. And these, uh, so these little, it's, it's a lot fuller where I trimmed them. They're sprouting out. Some of these, see this one right here, how it's really long. We could go ahead and, we could go ahead and uh, prune that again. But I, I want to kind of let it grow a little bit more. So I can look at it and see what the branches are doing before I go in and start chopping again. This has nothing to do with an update, but my Hoya is blooming. Look at this. That one was the first one to bloom. A couple of the leaves on the, the blossom leaves there are starting to, the petals are starting to decompose. But look at all these blooms on it. So happy. I got this from, from my friend Zana Clough. She lives in Idaho. And it was years ago, decades ago, I got that from her. December 31st, I put out a video about sweet potatoes. Here they are. They're growing in these little pots. They're doing well. Some of the leaves are looking weird, but that's okay, because that's just like the bottom leaf of a healthy, good growing plant. So these are all going to go out in the greenhouse as soon as warm weather gets here. The tray that I took the ginger from 
is right here, and new ginger is growing out of it, so I need to pick these off and plant more ginger plants. Our carrots are awesome. We took them out of the ground and we put them in this barrel filled with sand way back when, before the greenhouse was ever done. Uh, that was October 22nd was when this video came out. And we've been eating carrots all winter long. Uh, there's a lot of carrots can fit in a big barrel like this. This is a 55 gallon barrel cut in half and it's super heavy. But we, just, we like it's just this. kind of in our back hodgepodge I, room. I took most of the carrots out, but look at these guys. They're awesome. We just had some the other day. Uh, I, in soups. They're beautiful. I took some to my carrots. Good. I've been sharing them with the Sorensen family. But there's, we're almost out of them now. This is mostly sand now. But before we ate them all... Oh, they smell good. Oh, I wish you could smell that. You can oh, smell yeah. fresh carrots. Oh, that's yeah, they're, amazing. They're awesome. I hardly so, ever pull them out of here. You so usually we bring just, them in. We just keep them in the sand, but they taste so good. If it wasn't sandy, I'd bite one right now. But they are so yummy. Oh. Oh, smell that. You don't even need to smell it because you can. It, it fills oh, the whole room it's, with it. It smells like just delightful, beautiful, it's fresh so carrot. It's awesome. It's the fresh garden smell. You can see these ones back here. These ones, like this one, what happened to this one is I didn't bury it properly it when, after I dug them. So when I came in here, they were exposed. See how I'm leaving this right here? These ones will dry out like that. So after you harvest them, make sure they're covered good with sand. Those chickens know William feeds them. <laughs> On October 7th, we uh, released a video that showed all of the... Uh, garlic planting that happened in the outside garden and this is the garlic that's coming up now and you can see how it's it's like the tips are frozen back this is a harsh climate a rough winter you know there's been all kinds of snow and ice out here we have one video about the glacier and I didn't even write that one down that <laughs> could have been a wallopini update that probably wasn't on patreon so if you follow Vernie's YouTube channel you probably saw that but the glacier the end of it is right there. It's all melted in the springtime. There's my compost pile. So that's pretty awesome. Let's run in the greenhouse. We can leave this door open. <laughs> it's like Oz in here. <laughs> so look how awesome this is. Come with me. On February 15th, I did a video on planting seeds and those seeds are somewhere in here, but they went into plug trays and depending on what they were, some of them could still be in plug trays if they take two months before I transplant them. But if they're radishes, they're already growing in the ground in here. So when I plant, I plant most of the species that I grow, so 15 or 20 different things. On November 18th, I released a Patreon video about raised beds. This is one of the raised beds right here. And it's covered with a tarp. My irrigation lines are installed underneath it. And when we water it, the weed seeds will grow. Okay, see this weed seed right here? Right there, that's a seedling that's growing. There's hundreds of them in here. Oh, so, those little white filaments. But you can't, there's no green leaves to see because they haven't seen light. Because I keep the tarp on them to keep them from growing. It's eradicating weeds that without way, spraying The them. weeds will grow and then they die. Yeah. So that is awesome. But the, the second half of this raised bed is filled with plants. We're going to walk by it right now. In the portion of that raised bed where the tarp is on and the weeds are coming up, we're going to put strawberries there. And so we're growing that weed crop and they'll die under the tarp. We'll keep it watered. And then when the strawberries come, we won't have as big a weed problem. Right here is my last planting of my transplants from the little propagation house so I have all kinds of things in here there's lettuce kale collards chard all sorts of fun foods this has nothing to do with this video but these smell so good oh the fava beans they're so wonderful At some point, I did a video on planting garlic inside the greenhouse. I don't know what date that one released. It's not on my paper. I failed to write it down. But here's the garlic. 
and it's it's way up here to my elbow so it's over a foot long and it's growing beautiful i have a nice crop of weeds that i can add to the compost it's going to be so wonderful to come in here and get some really good um, food for the compost these are my row covers that have been covering this all winter now that we're having warmer weather i doubt we'll have hard enough frosts on this to have to cover it anymore so i pulled these out they're a little bit damp they're up here so they'll dry out today then i'll roll it up and put it away because springtime is officially here inside the wallapini this is the claytonia field inside our rock wall and i have egyptian onions that are coming up this one is springing up fast it's a good four inches tall so these are Egyptian walking onions. I have a, a dandelion that's growing in here. But these guys are doing good. There's a pea that's growing in here. <laughs> I didn't plant the pea. I, I think that might be a rodent planted pea. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but there's also a mustard that's growing in here. So there's just random things that are coming up. So that's why I'm not too excited about weeding quickly. Because sometimes you get gifts. I had two videos come out on Patreon that showed this bed number six. Actually, there were three. There was one video showing that we put the compost in here to create the bed, and so it could compost in place. This is a compost that we never turned because we want the fungus to grow like mad, and it is. Here's a fungal bloom right here. Ooh, that's a sticky, nasty one. And then we did a video on planting a green manure crop. I won't till this in like you would traditionally with a green manure crop, but I will take this and I have two choices. I can either cover it with a tarp and kill the peas that are coming up as a green manure crop, or I can pick them out, put them in the compost, and then we'll be ready to plant our tomatoes and peppers, our hot weather crops in this bed. Here's a colony of mushrooms. They're the cutest thing in the world. Look at them. Look at this fungal bloom we're having. So this is really exciting. On February 20th, a video came out about planting tomatoes in January. Here is my tomato plant that I planted in January. This is the plant itself. Totally died. So I planted 12 tomatoes in here in January. The rodents, they were voles. They came in here and they ate them. So it wasn't the frost that killed them. It was the rodents. They came in, they chewed them, and they chopped them off. They didn't even eat the plants. They just chopped them all off. So that kind of made me angry. That's, That's when he brought the cats in. I did. And then we released <laughs> another video with the cats. We released another video with cats. I'm not sure what day it was, but I have a video of a cat who had caught a, one of the voles and then he ate it and it's all on video. It's all right there on Patreon. <laughs> but it's right here. In the video where I brought the cats in to get rid of the mice and the voles and the rodents that were killing my tomatoes, I put out duct tape because I wanted to help catch the catch them, but the duct tape never caught anything. But look at that. It's still sticky. It's still catching me. So I think if a rodent ran over it, it would still catch them. So that was futile. When I was busy out here working one day, I moved the tarp back to plant bed number four right there. And when I got right here, I moved it back because I was planting these cabbages right in front, right there, those megaton cabbages. Look how beautiful they are. And then there was a big pile of peas. And I went and got Vernie, and she did a wallapini update, which is on her YouTube channel. And so that one came out, and I had all these peas, and they were starting to sprout. So I just planted them right there. And we call them rodent planted peas because over here I had planted peas. I planted three different varieties, and I didn't know where they had got that seed from. But this row right here... It never came up. Well, these ones did, but look at all this space where the peas didn't come up. So that's where the rodents stole the peas we from. We know where they came from. <laughs> and they took them over there. So if we look in here, this says Mr. Big Pea. So those are Mr. Big Pea variety, but we're not gonna tell anybody that. And uh, because it's funner to have this tag that says rodent planted peas. <laughs> So that was January 19th on the happened. But this is how they look today. So this is Mr. Big P. On March 1st, a video came out 
about how to separate onion chives and to propagate them asexually, which means from cuttings and not from seed. And here they are. They're doing really good. So these are the onion chives that I planted just a, uh, it's been nine days ago now. And here they are. This one even has blooms on it. That's amazing. So that's pretty good. They don't look very good right now, but onion chives are tough. The thing is they get huge root systems too. Let's just see what's happening under here. Oh yeah, yeah. look at that. So there's that. The roots are coming just through. Just over a week? That's amazing. Yeah, it's nine days because it was March 1st. There's nice new roots. So they're thriving. They're doing really good. And these will be planted in the stone wall. So that'll be super awesome. We're going to have our perennial herbs in there. I've had a lot of videos about the hotbed and what we're doing with it. And I think in the last video that we did, or maybe two before that, we talked about how we were putting in one bale of hay per week. I changed my mind. <laughs> it's not a bad idea because it would keep it warm. But I added a lot more than that. I'm putting, I put in three bales this last week. I'm just trying to get the compost really going good. And I put these pipes back in, so I'm going to be adding more compost on here, get it heaped up, try to get this rotting down good. Well, so. it's cool how far it has rotted down because it was full. It's been full four or five times, and you just keep yeah. adding more. Yeah. So. And so the, I have worms down in the bottom that never gets turned. It's nice and cool down there. And so they, they're thriving. As this heats up on top, you know, the worms don't go into it because it's hot. And, but as it rots down, they can come up and work it. So this is a hotbed. If I had a really cold night and it was going to freeze in here, I could grab my seedlings, which are right here behind us. Let's show those real quick. And I could set those on top of this. It's not a place where you would want to keep the plants all the time because you have gases that come out of the compost, ammonia gas, other gases that come out that can hurt the plants if they're in there all the time. So this is just an emergency situation. On February 19th, we had the kids in here and they walked around and we filmed their boots and we released the fact that we're going to do boot camp this year on April 22, 23, 24th, where you come to this garden, I teach you everything I know, so that when you go home, you can have a beautiful, productive garden. And from that time till now, we have seven people who've signed up and we're, we have a 15 minute max. So we. 15 person max. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be way longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> we have a 15-person maximum so that everybody gets individual attention so that everyone can go home empowered to grow your garden. So that's awesome right there. And I think that's it. If there's, if there's a video that came out and I didn't do a follow-up, ask me and I will let you know. Uh, almost all these videos came out on Patreon. We're going to put this video on Patreon. We're also going to put this video on the YouTube channel so that everybody can see the fun things we're doing in our patreon class My patreon class has things that you can get uh, you can ask me your personal questions I answer them watch videos that I make about me and my garden gardening and I teach you how to do things I write articles and in those articles I embed lots of websites that you can go to on where to get stuff to help you with your garden and how to do things I also have my spreadsheet that I keep track of everything I do. If I do it in this garden, it goes in the spreadsheet. So you have access to that on Patreon. We have a visitor. That's bad, she's gonna eat my crops. Right now she's eating weeds, but she doesn't know the difference. Just looks like yummy green that's food to her. That's why we can't leave the door open. Oh, she's so pretty though. I know, isn't that <laughs> you gotta, wonderful? You gotta love a chicken in the garden. <laughs> yeah, it's good. All right. Okay. That it? That's it.